All right, team, this video is solution limiting reactant. So all the fun of a limiting reactant problem, but with the extra fun of doing concentration calculations, yay. So um, these are big problems and they require a lot of attention to detail. So just keep track of what you're doing, be very neat in your work and hopefully it'll make sense. So this one says if 25.0 milliliters of 0 0.0500 molar iron to chloride solution are mixed with 5.00 milliliters of 0 0.200 molar potassium phosphate solution, how many grams of iron to phosphate, and it gives you the molar mass, how nice, will form? So since this is stoichiometry, it's a limiting reactant pr problem, the first thing we are going to need is a balanced chemical equation. So we have FeCl2, are mixed with blah, 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 potassium phosphate it says how many grams of iron Fe3PO42 will form. So we know that's going to be one product. But there is going to be another product because hopefully you recognize that this is a double replacement reaction. So what's happening is that the cations or the anions are switching, right? So iron gets paired with phosphate and potassium gets paired with chloride. So the other product is really easy, but you do need it to balance your equation. So the other product is going to be potassium chloride plus one minus one. So now we need to balance this. So irons, one iron here, three here, so we'll put a three. That makes six, two times three is six chlorides, or chlor yeah, chlorides. Um, so we need to put a six here, which then makes six potassiums. We only have three here. So if we multiply it by two, that will give us six, and then that makes two phosphates, but we have two phosphates, so that's good. Don't worry about phases, we don't really need those for this one. Um, so that's the first step, balanced chemical equation. Second step is to write down all the information that's given because there's a lot of numbers in here. So let's label our iron to chloride here with that information. So we have 25 milliliters of that and it is 0 0.0500 molar. And then the other thing that we have information for is the potassium phosphate. So we have five milliliters of that and the concentration. Okay, so this is kind of similar to, if you watch the video for solution stoichiometry, kind of similar to that, where the first thing we're gonna want to do is use the information about the concentration to get moles. So I made a little note in the last video too. Molarity, capital M, the units that are in there are moles on top and liters on the bottom. So if we take the concentration and if we multiply it by liters, by the volume of liters, then they'll cancel and we'll be left with moles, which is a really useful thing when we're doing stoichiometry, right? Because we know that the mole ratios will help us go from one substance to another using the balanced chemical equation. So what we can do for both iron to chloride and potassium phosphate is use the volume and the concentration to calculate how many moles of this and how many moles of this we're starting in the reaction. So I'm just gonna go in order and first calculate the moles of FeCl2. And I'm gonna do that by doing exactly this, multiplying the concentration by the volume. So I'm gonna take um, this volume, well, let's, let's do the concentration first. 0 0.0500 molar. And I wanna multiply it by the volume, but the volume has to be in liters so that it cancels here. So this volume is in milliliters. So if we just move the decimal three spaces to the left, that will convert it to liters. But you wanna keep that zero because it's significant here, but now it's in liters. So what I've just done is if we can multiply these, it will give us moles because capital M is moles divided by liters. So we do 0 0.0500, don't need those on the calculator. Uh, we get this number. So those are the moles of FeCl2. 
And we're gonna do the same thing, and three sig figs, because uh, both of these numbers have three sig figs, actually. And we're gonna do the same calculation to figure out the moles of potassium phosphate. Because this is a limiting reactant problem, so remember, we need to have two starting amounts, and then we're gonna figure out, we have to uh, work through both of them to see which one is the correct answer, because one of them will limit the reaction. So we'll do 0 .0 or 0 0.200 molar, because that's the concentration for potassium phosphate, and we want to multiply it by the volume in liters. So we'll need to move this, one, two, three. We need the zeros, they are significant. Type this in. So that's what the calculator says, but I need two more significant figures. Okay. So all I've done so far is just figured out how many moles we're starting with. So now it's like a, a more simple limiting reactant problem that you're used to, except we're given mole amounts instead of masses. So it's actually shorter now that we've gotten to this point. This took some work, but now it's like a regular limiting reactant problem, but we're going from uh, moles into mass because it's asking how many grams will form. So <clears throat> now we're gonna do both of these. We have to do two mole to mass problems. You're used to this for limiting reactant where you have to do two problems and then you pick the smaller number, right? So I'm gonna start with the FeCl2. So I'm starting with the number we calculated for moles of FeCl2. And then I need a mole ratio to go from moles of FeCl2 to moles of Fe3PO42. And we get those numbers from the balanced chemical equation. So there's a one here and then there's a three here. And then the last conversion is converting moles of iron to phosphate into grams. And we can do that using the molar mass and they gave it to us in the problem, it's very nice. So the mass is gonna go on top. and one mole in the bottom. And I'll calculate this. And we can use uh, three sig figs because this number has three sig figs. So 0 0.149. Grams of iron 2 phosphate. We're not done. We need to check the other one to see how many grams of product could be made with the moles of potassium phosphate. So then we're going to do another problem. First, we want the mole ratio. So that's one, uh, potassium phosphate is two, and then this one will be the same. So calculate this. So with uh, three sig figs, again, because this number has three sig figs, we'll get 0 0.179. So remember, to get your answer, think back to your normal limiting reactant problems. The reason we do it twice is because we figure out with this many moles of FeCl2, um, we could make this much product. 
and with this many moles of potassium phosphate, we could make this much product, but only one of these is correct. And we're only able to make the smaller number because we run out of something. In this case, we run out of FeCl2. That would be the limiting reactant. Um, and even though potassium phosphate could make more, we don't have enough of the iron two chloride to keep going. So this is the reactant that's in excess. This problem doesn't actually ask that, just asks for the answer, but you have to have that understanding that when you get these two answers, the actual answer is the smaller number. Okay, so a little bit of tricky stuff up here to get the amount of moles to start with, but then it's like a regular limiting reactant problem, right? So tons of fun. Good luck with the problems.